And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, after a long set of technical difficulties and a long little bit of a break, we are going to be bringing a different match to you. This time we are going to be bringing Bowling Green versus Michigan Tech. My name, one more time, is Gormizer. Joining me on the desk is J-Mac. And J-Mac, I'm sure you're as excited as I am to get back into the games. Yes, we have been on a very long delay at the moment. A lot of issues with production, some back-end issues more than anything going on. But we are finally back in this game. We're going to get to see Bowling at Green State one more time here on our stream. First rounds of bands have come up. It is Thanatos, Thoth, Izanami now, and Sylvanas taking off the board. Yeah, nothing too out of the ordinary there. I mean, Izanami is one of the ones that's a little iffy, only because she recently got nursed, but she's still very strong in that role. And of course, Sylvanas being able to shred protections, root, a lot of CC on his end. Thoth, one-shot god, and Thanatos, early game god. Everything taken off, nothing too out of the ordinary. And really, right now, we're looking, I mean, uh, Hercules being hovered over, locked in Hercules. immediately. And honestly, I'm kind of a little surprised to see that. I mean, earlier we saw that band out in the first phase, and now we're seeing it picked up in the first phase. It's very risky to pick it up this early in the game with gods like Sir Ket still online. Odin is still available as well for another strong anti-healer. And even Osiris, if they wanted to go into a third true anti-healing god of zero healing. Now, with all of those recent buffs coming into fruition for Osiris and Sir Ket, as well as Odin there, those three gods now have 100% no healing. There's no additional that you get from Rod of Asclepius or anything else like that. It's now 100% true uh, healing negation. Medusa, another great god who has some healing reduction in her. 50% now at all ranks on her lacerate. And Thor is going to be the jungle pick locked in for Michigan Tech. Thor, the king of setup for the mid lane, for anyone really when it comes down to it. I mean, two stuns on his kit, and plus the double tap from the hammer doing a lot of wheelish, and Raijin on the other side being hovered over, actually switched over to the Vulcan. And a wheelish is one of those characters that I've seen a lot of lately, and really being able to combo that with the Vulcan oh, Weeball, getting that extra knock up just to have Vulcan. a little bit of security so it's not all relying in kit for the wheelish to be able to get that knock up in the jungle. So it's going to be really good. Ultimately, they have a lot of synergy right now on the side of Bowling Green. But like you said, with the Medusa having that anti-heal, and honestly, with Thor having the kind of shutdown that he does, Vulcan is going to be a little bit iffy. As long as he can get that burst damage out, he's going to be strong. But if he can get caught out, like if Thor catches him down with a wall or anything like that, it's going to get a little shaky for him. Yeah, especially since the mid lane is still open right now for Michigan Tech, they may look to go into Poseidon, which would shut down Vulcan's only form of escape. That backfire would not be able to get out of it or away from it. Set, a, set up potential for Bowling Green, as you said, very strong. They have the Vulcan Meatball, very easy to confirm knockup. They also have the Hercules, who has that Earthbreaker, who could potentially set up. If they can force those Purification Beads early in the Wheelish Gravity Surge, then they can all. Then Hercules will be able to wait out that pull and driving strike them back anyway. So it's a lot of really strong setup for this team. Kepri gonna be locked in as the guardian on the other side with Thanatos off the table and Alquang not really a relevant jungler at the time being. Kepri gonna be safely locked in on the side of Michigan Tech. And Alquang is one of those few gods. I think I've seen him a couple times, but all of those have been on the back of Benny Hugh and not something I think that we would see any team really pull out unless they're absolutely feeling themselves. And Kepri being locked in there, going to allow Medusa to have that little bit of extra clear early on. A little bit more of an advantage going through in the duo lane, really, just having that early game clear. But I mean, we saw in the beginning of the, the first game we were trying to stream that sometimes Kepri Medusa isn't always going to give you the clear you need. Well, I mean, that's what happens when you walk up and don't realize that there's an Ares Fenrir with a Sunder <laughs> sitting in the side of your jungle. Doesn't really work out too well for you. Double Guardian ban on the side of Michigan Tech. Xing Chen and Sobek taken off the board. Poseidon taken away by Bowling Green. They are very aware of that cripple on there. Really shuts down a wheelish more than any of these other gods as she cannot use her feather step and she cannot get onto or off of Suku during that time period. So going to be very uh, a very smart ban taken away from them. And Giannis going to be the final ban in this phase. Another very strong, very mobile god taken off the table. Yeah, and everyone, so far, like all of the bans, like the three guardians that have been banned out Shock! really are the ones that you don't want to have to deal with. And especially when you're a Kepri, when you already have someone who's regarded up highly with where he is in that position, it tends to go your way to get rid of the Sobek. Get rid of the Sylvanas, which we saw in the first man, but get rid of that Xing Chin as well. Just because he has a lot of versatility, not only going into the solo lane, but 
sometimes potential to be an actual support, not necessarily something I've seen in a long time, but it is still possible because we're going to see Shock locked in, and honestly, I'm excited to see the God of Thunder come in. Yeah, unfortunately, this is not Puckham playing him. Uh, I, I, rem I remember that was always our fun thing about Puckham was he was the god, he was the chalk god. I mean, he played chalk, he won lane. That's what Puckham did. Though that flavor pick, I think, has kind of died off for him. Who knows? Maybe one day we'll kind of see just that throwback moment to it. At the moment, the trickster god Loki is being hovered in. I. Don't imagine that this one will be locked in. Um, they already have their jungler, and while Loki is a decent solo laner, going against Chalk, he's going to have a very difficult time. And let's be real, who's he honestly going to be able to kill going into the later stages of the game on this team with a Kepri as their support? Yeah, when it comes down to it, Loki, not going to be looked at for much longer. They're actually switched over to the Cupid and the Ymir overall. And really, I kind of like it. I kind of feel Tomah. iffy about Changa actually locked in immediately. Like, I'm going over here, going to talk about Cupid, how I've seen him do successfully, seen him fail. But on the other side, I mean, Changa is someone I have not seen in a long time. And it's going to be an interesting matchup with the Hercules. Yeah, it's going to be in this mid lane, and more than anything, it's going to be to immune out the Vulcan ultimates if she ever gets caught up in the mix of it, with Hercules and Ymir being really strong setup gods for that Vulcan ultimate. She's going to be saving those purification beats to get away from the knockups, to get away from any kind of stuns or pushes that may come about, and then she's going to be able to save that second ability so she doesn't have to waste her Aegis Amulet at the time for it. Really strong team on both sides. I mean, they have a lot of strong cripples on the side of Cupid. That Fields of Love going to do massive wonders against this team. Chunga really the only one who will be kind of unaffected by this. She does have that second ability to be able to get out of it. Kepri, Shock, Medusa, Thor, they're all going to have a very difficult time going against this matchup. Yeah, and really, it's just going to be one of those things that the only way to really see how they fare about it is to get into the game. So we're going to take a very, very brief break as we transition into the game. And then ultimately, we will be right back with Bowling Green versus Michigan Tech here for you shortly. And we are back into the game. Like I said, a very, very brief break with you for Bowling Green 
versus Michigan Tech, and both of these teams right now are running up a very strong roster, and both of them having this kind of similar 2-2-1 start. And again, this is one of the things I think I've said for Season 4 a lot, but it's just I love the versatility of the start and how much things can change from game to game to game. And right now, I'm interested to see, I mean, what both of these teams are going to pull out. It looks like both of them are pulling the 2-2-1 two, two, strap, putting the support back over in that duo lane, and the jungler sitting in the mid to try and get as much pressure because that speed buff invade has been the biggest factor in a lot of these games. Is who's going to get that first enemy speed buff versus who's going to get their first own speed buff. And really, are they going to be able to steal those blue buffs away from them as well? Duo lane is... You know, dual lane is also the strong push. It's going to be who's going to get those purple buff or red buff creeps more than anything else. And right now, it's relatively even. Not going to be able to go away. Not going to be able to do too much here. Yeah, everyone really kind of coming out as a stalemate in their lane. Right now, the thing I'm looking at is the fact that we do have a Changa, and it's a Changa mid. So originally, you know, I saw this. I didn't even register what else was on the team. And I thought, okay, yeah, it's going to be an interesting matchup, you know, for the Hercules. Because that's what I'm used to seeing a Changa do is go up against, you know, that tanky healer in that solo lane. But lately, it has been a mid lane. And the only issue that I really have with it is exactly what we're seeing kind of like right now where it's just not going to be able to outpush the Vulcan in the turret, especially with the Awilish there. And while Thor can help out, it's just all in all, they're mainly going to be looking towards that like late game setup, not even burst like we would see out of like the Vulcan, but setup really for like the Medusa, the Thor, and for the Chalk to maybe be able to pick up some of those kills. I will say, I do like the camp start that's come out of Bowling Green. Instead of going for their buffs immediately, the only buff that's been taken right now has been their purple buff. But red buff and speed buff have gone untouched up until about this point where they're heading down to it. Instead, they opted to go for those mid camps. While the mid camps offer less experience, it's really easy to just, kind of just forget about them. And instead, Bowling Green State has taken note and they said, hey, we're going to take away some of their potential farm. We still leave our stuff open. We know they're not going for it, so we'll get to it whenever it's ready. And you touched it perfectly right there. That potential farm. Take away whatever Michigan State could use to be able to push themselves ahead. And that's exactly what they were able to do. And now, as we can see, I mean, we get to see, you know, Tyler Tramp over there be able to go through his own jungle, clear up his back camps like it's no problem. Oracle Harpies might be lost. Michigan Tech going to be able to clear that one up and get that free vision. But ultimately, the mid camps and the elementals all going in favor. Actually, the elementals were picked up by Chalk. So the mid camps going in favor of Bowling Green State. But the elementals going to be tossed up and those are some of the more important like you said like that's really the get them off the table so that no one else can have them can't. yeah and right now both of those big jungle bosses the elementals and the oracles have gone the way of michigan tech and that's evened out the experience the gold is a little bit in favor of bowling green but not enough at this stage to really warrant anything a bit of aggression over in the duo lane and shave nips may be the first one to fall a good meditation is going to save him for now king med's going to dash in going to take one viper shot and that's going to spell the end of that engagement king med right there just made me have a small little panic attack when i saw him as a cupid with that low health dash forward even with the wall there with the medusa i felt like that was a little bit of a risk but overall it didn't end up working negatively for him haru going to be able to come out from shave nips but it's not going to be enough he's over in the solo lane the tower going to stop that guy from getting plucked just off the mark i mean door of wood was able to find it but because of the positioning the tower oh, actually blocks him from coming backwards little be the first sun. one Little Sud gets double ulted into the mid lane. The Waxing Moon into the Anvil of Dawn is going to finish him off. But luckily, because of what we mentioned earlier, since they took their speed buff so late, they tried to make the rotation into it, and now we're going to be just getting the late timer onto that one. Door of Wood and Tyler Tramp going to make the rotation in and pick up those elementals there. So because of that slight delay, Bowling Green was actually able to come up on top of that. Yeah, just uh, like you said, kind of a smart really engagement early on being able to control those timers where they are right now trying to get a little bit of aggression tyler champ gonna be taking some damage nice feather step gonna be able to allow him to dodge a little bit of damage but ultimately having to use that suku just to jump away and get away from his aggressors i mean michigan tech right now they have the lead sitting i mean 500 gold 700 experience nothing too large but it's just enough to be kind of you know have a small lead is right now we're gonna be seeing medusa blink freeze but bead's gonna be good yeah, but at the moment now, Shave Nips caught in between a wall and a wheel. So Petrify is going to hit three people. Shave Nips is going to be able to walk away in the Fields of Love. Not going to do anything. That could have been a very big kill if White Kite was able to get anybody else.
that and i mean really when it comes down to it white kite really having a great play just stopping the aggression onto his support not allowing them to drop any kills not allowing them to come forward on bowling green to be able to find anything that they might want you know especially being able to take off capri it's early on being able to get any kill is really going to be worth it even if you lose your support and you're kind of like well it's just the support it doesn't matter as much as long as you aren't dropping kills and right now that's what michigan state or tech is looking for and overall, I mean, both teams immediately fall back to farming it up. The red buffs taken by both squads. But it looks like we might be seeing, you no know, Michigan Tech are going to be leaving that one down for their mid laner. I thought they were going to put that on the ADC to give them a little bit more of an advantage in that matchup against King Med. But overall, it's not going to do happen. Ooh, solo kill over in the solo lane. Dwarf Wood takes down that guy. Both uh, are the ultimate from Dwarf Wood still available, so no boulder needing to be used at any point now. He can just kind of clear the wave with that, as we tend to see Hercules do a little less of, is just kind of throw that boulder for the wave clear, but he now does have that for the next big fight that comes up, and it looks like the blue buff is going to be the point of contention for him, or he may actually be making a rotation down towards this Elementals. Zarha, the only one in the area at the time for Michigan Tech, and it might be just free Elementals going their way. I feel like I could hear the player comms when he was walking towards Michigan Tech's jungle, just being like, okay, dude, calm down, fall back, don't go too far, because at that point, any kind of rotation, especially from Zarha on this door, would be good. And speaking of Zarha, he's going to be going up into the air, going to be looking for something. The question is where he's going to come crashing down. Onto Vesnar, a double ult one more time, but it's going to be able to pick them up a kill. But Ooh. the Returnal going to be Ooh. doing a lot of damage, but two meditations immediately pop for Michigan Tech, not yeah. dealing with that damage. Yeah, and that's just going to immediately negate everything that Vulcan did, but they have to be careful about those groupings in the late stage of the game. That's a death on anybody caught inside of that. They're lucky this time around that the, the damage is so low. Four-man Meatball into the Fields of Love, going to force the Purification, and Code's going to get yanked into the back, but a great immunity is going to keep him from the Feather Step damage, and Zarha is going to pick up Tyler Trant because of it. And now it looks like Michigan Tech might want to return some of that aggression. They're all sitting at about half health, though, right now. Even with a healer, it's not going to be comfortable enough for them to push forward. And they have to deal with these pesky minions, and they're going to be able to clear those out, but not fighting forward into King Med and Lil Sudman. Right there, it's going to fall back. Although now Ymir, one more time, looking like he might get caught out. The stun going to connect, the double tap not going to quite hit fully. And the Berserker's Barrage gets a little bit of extra poke. But now it's going to be the turnaround. The wall double freeze. He's waiting for Vulcan. Meatball going to be good. The shards of ice being channeled. And Capriol used on himself. Should be able to find that revive. And ultimately, Shave Nips is going to make it out of there. Yeah, that's going to be a free disengage for him. But another great wall. The double tap's not going to connect. But it doesn't matter. The spin to win is going to take out the Frost Giant himself. It's going to be another kill going the way of Michigan Tech. Sitting up 4-1. to one. But only a 700 gold lead. And in fact, the experience is in favor of Bowling Green State. And that just goes to show that the farming right now on Bowling Green Street is going very, very well. And part of it is the fact that I've seen Michigan Tech pick up this double Bumbos, but I haven't really seen them utilize it as well as you would. Normally when you see that the mid laner and the jungler don't really stick together, right? The mid laner goes off onto the left hand jungle and they kind of get that dual jungle thing going on. Whereas right now, Encode has been there almost every single camp with this Thor, mainly because the Changa, again, doesn't quite have that clear early on. It's having to use two to three abilities just to get all of the clear. And right there, I mean, we just see Vulcan steal away a mid Harpy for three, nothing really coming out of that one. It's Hercules looking to get pulled back, double tap, stun coming down, but ultimately he's a Hercules. Yeah, the wall just a little bit off the mark from Zarha, not going to be able to block him in. Three members chasing him down, but is Hercules going to be able to walk away from that one? No problem. Heal up, come back into the fight whenever he wants to. Vulcan right now in the mid lane, while we haven't seen any kills on him, it was a beautiful Earth Shaker that we saw in that last big team fight. Zarha going to get the wall and the spin to win on Earth Shaker. Not going to connect at all. I think he was predicting them to come back back in but i'm gonna do a thing and bowling green actually sneaks away the gold fury i was waiting that entire time for michigan tech to do anything to make any sort of rotation over into that side of the map and the only person who eventually got to spy anything was white kai but he was too little too late came back and was unable to see that but zarha gonna be able to pick up tyler champ right now door of wood is standing in the back line standing about half health is able to get aggressed on right now though vesnar taking a lot of poke forward zarha gonna be able to pick up that one a nice stun from the cupid should be able to save his life along with the tower and of course door of wood on that hercules gonna just be looking to back here and not re-engage yeah but thanks to that snuck gold fury bowling green state is actually keeping themselves in the lead gold wise they still have a very very slight experience lead Gold just kind of dipping in and out, but 
I mean, as you said, nobody was making the rotation over except for White Kite, and I think that's because Lil Sud on this Vulcan was doing a great job of really baiting the enemy team, trying to keep them over on that side and say, hey, I'm a tasty Vulcan. Nobody knows what's going on at this Gold Fury. <laughs> and, I mean, that is exactly what happened. I mean, with four members really sitting on that right-hand side, three in mid, I think Chalk was either isolated in his lane or making that rotation over, but, like, the only person who was over here on this left-hand side was White Kite, and he was farming up, no problem. It's like, Cupid's not here. I don't have anything to worry about right now. And when it comes down to it, that's why you have to have vision on the map. That's why you ward. And of course, now I see a ton of red wards thrown everywhere across the map. And one very specifically located to be able to spot out a fire giant or a bullet team. is right now Door of Wood one more time going to get pulled back into his team. A wall stun, double tap, push going to be good. And ultimately, Boulder going to be able to get a lot of return damage. Zarha falling down, the meditation coming out, and a Wheelix not going to hit that ult. That's going to be a really big play for us. Oh, but the great pull from Hercules is going to be able to slam two of them back. Chalk Ultimate Force, a great better step, and the Earth Shaker nice. over the top. Little Sud able to take down the shock. A beautiful shot coming out from the Vulcan right now, trying to find those extra two kills that are waiting for him. He's not able to find the damage in the tower. Still at the point where it does a little bit too much damage for them to feel confident in it. But that jungle looks just as tasty as those kills, and that is going to be their target. Blue buff going to be coming down. Speed buff, if they wait a little bit, they'll recognize that it's about to spawn, but we're the ones with the timer, and they are not. And so they are going to end up giving up that to find, well, the mid harpies, which isn't too bad. King Med realizing that his minions are pushed too far up in that duo lane has rotated over towards the mid. Get those mid can those mid harpies to get a little bit of extra XP. And it's gonna start making his rotations over for these potential next team fights as the portal demon is the next big juicy target. Oracle harpies are coming back up in just a moment. But the farming on bowling green has been phenomenal this game. They've kept themselves either even or ahead this entire time. And that's really important only when you look at the fact that, I mean, they have two kills to six. They are down four kills. They haven't really been winning these engagements. And really, the ones they have won have been on the back of their mid laner when it comes down to it. The damage that we are seeing come out of this Vulcan is really changing the game for them. And while right now I see this Awilish making the rotation over, we're going to see that guy get pushed into the tower. Door of Wood taking it up. The Silence going to be coming through with the knockup. But ultimately, I feel like that was a big misplay from the Hercules. Yeah, that guy's ultimate now on cooldown. Chalk not going to be able to get that immunity and that big AoE silence for about another 80 seconds or so. Is going towards that breastplate of Valor, but doesn't have it online quite as yet. Mid lane, we're going to see a little bit of aggression onto this Chonga, but they already have a second item shield of Reef Growth. Going to be able to give them some very strong passive movement speed. One of the most undervalued, but one of the most important things in this entire game is movement speed yeah and that's exactly what i feel like a wheelish is i mean kind of the foundation for her is going to be on the back of that movement speed b is used immediately by vulcan but we've been seeing you know with suku with the speed buff we see rotations come out from a wheelish a little bit more than we see from other junglers of course thor is kind of able to wander that line with her because of his global presence his semi-global ultimate being able to come crashing down like from the gold fury pit and allowing him to kind of have that little bit of extra extension even without that movement speed King Med making the rotation over here towards the mid lane. Might want to try and get a pick here. Going to see three members, but they're all pushing back into the backhand of their tower. With that Kepri revive still online, I don't think they're going to be able to get anything out of it. Minion's pushing up over in that dual lane, so he's going to realize nothing for me in mid. Time to go back, or maybe not. Now he's looking to maybe push forward as Thor is aggressing in. His hammer is now down. Fields of Love not going to come out, however. Instead, it's just going to throw out the missed heart bomb and really be the end of that one. Yeah, Bowling Green looking not necessarily for that much aggression. And I kind of like it. I mean, when they're farming as well as they are, they don't really need to fight so much. We're going to see Medusa get aggressive. We're actually going to see a Chonga ult completely miss the mark. Thor up in the air looking for anything, but he's not going to be wanting to crash down right into the Shards of Ice. He's waiting patiently, but ultimately he just comes crashing back that down where he was. Yeah, great, great heads up by Zaha to not go back down into that fight. As three members sitting under the tower, but a wheelish going to get a pull over the wall onto White Kai, but that's going to spell the end of it. Fields of Love going to come down on the two members, but it's not going to do anything. Vulcan Ultimate not going to connect. It's a little too far off the mark. Zaha's going to be able to proc that revive thanks to the Heart Bomb, and that's going to be the end of that fight. A lot of ultimates used, but nothing to come of it. Yeah, and that's really just a big wash right now. Dwarf Wood making that rotation over, but again, he's a Hercules, he's tanky. He's attacking Shave Nyx, who is just as tanky. And really, I mean, both teams, they're going for 
I feel like they just kind of miss their aggression, or really they actually use their abilities just kind of perfectly in place to not really connect with anybody on the other side. Like we saw Michigan Tech, and that Vulcan ult should have connected with two, but some really good jukes, and of course Changa being able to immune damage kind of got out of that. And the same thing goes for pretty much every single ability. There was just someone ready to counter whatever came out. Yeah, Tyler Tramp did a real good job rotating off to the side where he was able to get a pull inside of the jungle, but a great purification from White Kite was able to immune any damage and immune the further aggression from the pull there. So, like you said, a lot of ultimates used that would have worked well together, but because of the great awareness by the players and by the great relic usage as well, they were able to just get out of that one scot-free. So, I just realized that Zarha has all six kills for Michigan Tech right now. Oh. I thought it would have been a little bit more spread out. He is all six of the kills on the jungle. And I mean, he's been the one setting him up, but it just hasn't really been spreading the love right now. And really, I don't think that's a big issue, really, when it comes down to the fact that, you know, they have a Changa in the mid. They don't really need the levels there. But it's a little bit interesting to notice that it's all going on the back of him, even though I've seen definitely some good team play from them. It feels maybe like he's going to be not necessarily their isolated carry, but the person that they're expecting to carry a little bit harder than the Medusa. So now he's come crashing down. B's going to be used. Age is going to be used. And while the pluck is good on the wheelish, the ult from Changa, again, missing the mark. Knockup going to be good, but the oh. Petrify is better. Stone statues for all. And now Fields of Love going to be able to confirm one proc than other one. Shave Nips, White Kite, both really dope. Double Freeze, Meatball going to be good, but it's not going to find the damage just yet. Vulcan going to be able to find that with a Backfire. Once again, Chonga Old not able to connect to anybody thanks to the great purification from Tyler Tramp was able to get away from that one. And it's just going to be a wash of what happened in that last team fight. Michigan Tech was trying to sneak around that Gold Fury. They went into the air and said, decided to drop the Gold Fury for the aggro, but they instead have the ones at the aggro turn onto them. Little Sud picks up a second kill in that fight, and now it's Bowling Green's turn to take on this Gold Fury. And they're going to be looking for their second gold fear of the game right now. Encode looking to steal it. Not able to find that just in time. Just a little bit off. Really was close to being able to possibly find that, but not going to be able to get it. And with the shield of regrowth on the Changa, going to have that extra little bit of mobility to be able to force himself out. I mean, you were talking about movement speed earlier. And I mean, plus 40% movement speed whenever you get healed is definitely very good. Yeah, especially since it's just an ability that you're going to use. You're not... You know, some characters like Tyr, the only time they're going to get Shield of Regrowth is when they hit a minion with their defensive power cleave. Mm -hmm. That's like Changa and Hercules. They get it right away, and so they're going to be able to utilize it. They can use it for damage. They can use it for sustain. They can use it just even if they want to move and get that free mobility. Changa, I mean, it's a great item on her. It gives her it gives her CDR. It gives her H HP and mana re uh, regen. also gives her a little bit of extra HP to get a little bit of tankiness to try and survive those big Vulcan ultimates that come over onto her. So... Really great item pickup and real great use of the movement speed passive on it. And right now, I mean, Bowling Green are sitting heavily on this right-hand side of the map, and they have no reason to really worry about that left-hand side as they've confirmed both Gold Furies that have been taken in this game. And right now, they're going to be looking for a fight to try and confirm themselves either a Portal Demon or a Fire Giant, or at least get up a few kills. And Michigan Tech, they're taking careful positioning, but I hear Thor going up into the air. He's looking for a fight, and I think he's going to be coming crashing down very soon. But he's waiting patiently. I'm actually surprised with the patience of Zarha, but ultimately he's not going to connect with anybody. Yeah, and as you can see, Pink's on the map showing that White Kite is the one now pushing down this tier 2 tower. Somebody's going to need to back and stop this one, but there's no teleport available on their side. Instead, they're going to aggress onto the portal demon because of it. Well, uh, Thor ultimate is offline, so really nobody's going to be able to confirm this one. Bowling Green steals that, or keeps themselves from getting that one stolen away. Shave Nips now forced to run. Zaha Purification Force, but a great two-man route is going to stop that one for now. That Door of Wood going to get stunned out. King Med going to be going in. Harbomb going to be good, but is it enough damage? The proc for the revive is going to get done. Tyler Tramp, all he had to do was wait a little bit. You saw Thor held still. He was ready to wait patiently. He thought it was going to come through, but ultimately it's going to get proc. He's going to be saved. And now Vulcan all coming through. Not going to be able to connect with anybody. And Wheelish sitting at about half health. Just the one little bit of damage, had it not been done, could have been the turn of that fight to get them a kill. But right now it comes out as a wash. Yeah, and now that leaves the Oracle Harpies open for Bowling Green if they wish to go onto it. White Kite gonna stop Vesnar from being able to go onto it. White Kite himself may be able to get it, but a great knockup into the back is gonna be able to get the pull on both relics forced away there. And White Kite is going to be the first victim in this Gold Fury fight over here.
going to be pulled up into the air. Is that support? Kepri no longer has that revive online, so the rest of his team is in trouble. Zarha going to be the next to fall as Tyler Tramp gets a beautiful feather step onto him. And now Encode may be the next one to fall. And now we're going to see Encode fall, just like you had said. Two members left standing right here. Shave Nips, that guy, both looking to run away. Both tanky targets. But it doesn't look like Dora of Wood wants to let them go just yet. I feel the objective call coming through the blood right now. Get that tier one tower. We're going to see Shave Nips go for that aggression. But there is a two-man freeze. Carpet coming down. Vulcan burst. Going to be good for a little bit. The wall actually stopping Vulcan from doing the damage. But he is able to pick up that kill. And now that guy with Fields of Love going to get stunned out and finds the kill. King Med picks up another one. Yeah, that's going to be the fourth kill for this Cupid. 404 stat line not found. King Med doing a fantastic job zoning for his team. The three man Petrify is not going to confirm any stun. So I'm just going to confirm that White Kite is actually going to have a ton of damage dealt out to him because of that Harp Bomb. Boulder going to be um, a bit off the mark to say the least there from Door of Wood. And now it's going to be a disengage from Bowling Green State. And now Michigan Tech, they're looking like they're in not necessarily the roughest position that I've seen in Smite, but definitely not where they would like to be sitting now behind 5,600 gold, 8,200 experience. And with the Gold Fairy up in about a minute, they could be looking over there. The Fire Giant is still available, though, and I feel like Bowling Green, if they can sniff it out, if they see anyone making a rotation over that Gold Fairy, they are immediately going to collapse and take at least one objective for them, either a Tower or the Fire Giant, depending on really how they feel it. I mean, they are in the position to make the calls with the lead they have. Yeah, and I think what you mentioned earlier about how Thor, piloted by Zarha, is the only one who had six kills out of the six at the time being, but hold on to that mid lane fight right now. White Kite is critically low in HP, thanks to a great pull from Tyler Tramp. No other ultimates, and it looks like it'll be a temporary disengage, but... There was only six kills at the time for Michigan Tech, and as you said, all of them were on Zarha. The only one who has a kill now besides him is Encode on this Chunga. As you said, not sharing the love with this team, only gave, granting them assists, and that's really what's been putting them behind. And when it comes down to it, the fact is Medusa just not having the impact. I mean, we saw White Kite have a great ultimate earlier, but so far, I mean, Bowling Green has been great and not letting themselves get into a position where that happens again. But it's also the fact that none of the kills, again, are going on to the carry that they really need. And Zarha on this Thor, he's great early on, but he starts to fall off a little bit towards the late game. You really want the physical damage pumper that is going to be the Medusa here to get those kills, get those levels, get those items. And right now, I mean, just sitting a little bit behind, one level behind the Cupid, but Cupid has a very distinct advantage. And Cupid, I mean, with a little bit of an unorthodox build going into the Crusher that I haven't seen in a long time, still showing what he's worth at 4-0-4. Yeah, Cupid a little bit more ability than he has auto attack as we can see. He's got to force out that purification because of the fields of love. But because he's so ability focused, getting that crusher is going to subtract time from his cooldowns if he lands onto that one. Lil Sud going to be pulled by the Capri. is going to fall to White Kite. Uh, Great Petrify is going to somewhat disengage the team fight for them, but they're getting chased out and they're currently losing this at the moment 3v5. Going to be pulled into the back of Shave Nips thanks to a great plug. Now going to take the damage from the Heart Bomb, and he's going to fall. Walks away from his team to make sure that nobody gets stunned out. White Knight going to get frozen. Ice Carpet comes down. Blocked is Door of Wood. He cannot get away. White Kite going to fall. Great block on that last rate. And King Med going to pick up Zarha in the back. Zarha trying his best to get anything in return, but he finds himself in a bad position, standing behind the four standing members of Bowling Green State, who are now going to turn their eyes towards this respawning portal demon, as well as the fire giant that they could potentially go for. Of course, with Encode up and that guy, even though they don't have their ultimates, it's, it's still a little bit of a risk to try and go for a big objective like the fire giant. So portal demon going to be started up, and ultimately it should be confirmed. Yeah, I don't think that Encode is going to be able to get in here in, in here in time. His ultimate's not going to be coming up for about another 10 seconds or so. That's going to be the Portal Demon going the way of Bowling Green State. Michigan State just going to walk away from that one, place down some ward coverage so that they know if anybody ever steps foot back through that Portal Demon. And that's one of the risky, it's one of the risk versus reward uh, benefits of the Portal Demon is, yes, you have a free teleport across the map to the Fire Giant, but... If you have no ward coverage and you're not paying attention, you could be walking into a potential death trap. And right now it's looking a little rough for them overall. And again, I mean, Bowling Green are just kind of controlling the way the pace of the game is going. Now leading at 7,000 gold, 10,600 experience. They are being able to farm up just as well as they have been all game. I think King Med actually just lost a mid harpy to <laughs> encode over there, but really, 
at this point. I mean, you can see how he feels. He's jumping about it. He, you know, shooting out his autos and a kind of passive aggressive state while the rest of his team looking possibly to gank up and defend this right hand tier one. Lil Sud pushing up the tier one in the duo lane, but the 3v2 fight now. White Kite's gonna get stunned down, and the ultimate is not gonna be enough. And said he walks back into the tower. Gonna take an aggro shot from that one, and King Med's gonna be able to pick him up. Very unfortunate for White Kite there. Chase is on. Hercules is gonna continue the aggression forward as the minions are being pushed up. Shock's axe not gonna connect onto anybody, and now Michigan Tech on a full retreat. And now they're being chased down. I expect to see a wall. Fields of Love coming out. Freeze going to be able to connect onto that guy who's going to get a res rock right onto him. Cupid going to continue chasing that down while the rest of the team goes for the aggression onto Encode, who's going to get pushed to the wall, stunned out. A lot of damage being thrown down. Chonga just trying to get away, but not able to find it. Zaha, the next one on the chopping block, the target for the team. But the Phoenix is there. The rest of the team has arrived. And ultimately, he should be able to get out. But King Med, he decides, you know what? We don't need kills. I'm going to get a tier two. Yeah, he's going to split push over on that right hand side, trying to expose that Phoenix a little bit more from a great double tap. Teleporting in is Zarha, seeing if he can pick up this Vulcan, but he's going to get away with just the bare skin of his health bar there. Zarha going to fall to King Med. That guy forced to use the ultimate just to get away. Silence out the enemies and a great triple root, but the wall what may wall. be even better. That guy going to get pushed against the wall and slapped down. Door of Wood gets that kill. One more time for Michigan Tech. They're standing here with two members to defend. And really, they're looking for this defense. The Phoenix ultimately might not fall down in this fight. But I'm watching Owilish on this mini-map go over towards that left-hand lane. And that is where a Tier 1 ultimately is going to fall. Possibly a Tier 2. And right now, I just see the rest of them distracting. Inko going to hit a two-man ultimate right now. Vestar taking a lot of damage. The freeze is going to be good, though. And that's going to stop the aggression. Ultimately, should be able to save his team. They should back off here. And King Med still looking for a little bit of poke, but ultimately actually going to continue the fight and hitting a lot of autos. Fields of Love going to be coming out, but not going to be able to pick up Inko. And right now, I mean, again, looking over this left-hand lane is going to be Siege now. Yeah, I mean, since that Shield of Regrowth, also the immunity frames, I don't even think that Chunga needed in that case, is that Shield of Regrowth gave enough movement speed to pretty much mitigate entirely what came of that Fields of Love. Door of Wood falling a little bit low here as the Fatalis is online for White Kite. They're able to chase them down. Inco going to get frozen. Inco going to get jumped on. The Aegis Avila is good. It's going to take down Zara almost to critical, almost death. He's going to be forced to go all the way back to base, and that's going to be a Tier 2 tower for Bowling Green. Now all six towers off the board. Michigan Tech now relying on their Phoenix. Is King Med going to get aggressive right now? White Knight forced to use that Aegis. Knocked up. The res is going to be good, though. Going to save his life right there. And King Med, you can still see just in his play, in this Cupid play, I can see his kind of emotions coming through. But right now, the Phoenix is looking to be the one that is the target right now. King Med focusing that down. Tyler Tramp getting low. Going to be able to fall down right there. Door of Wood doing his best for his team. But ultimately, they're going to fall back. The stun comes out good from the Heart Bomb as well as the Changa. And I think that's going to be a clean escape for Bowling Green. But right now, in Little Sudman, he's a little bit dangerous right now. Yeah, he's a little too close to Skipper right now as he has two strong forms of CC, but a good wall is going to be able to kind of close, or I should say expand that gap. Continue to chase down a little Sud. He's maybe trying to get a good bait here. Meatball's not going to connect. He threw it in place thinking it was going to be a little bit quicker, and he is going to fall. Vesnar not able to do anything except for throw up a wall to Gold Fury. Gonna likely be going the way of Michigan Tech here, unless Dora Boy can get a really good boulder here. King Med's gonna throw out the Fields of Love. Gonna do quite a bit of damage, not enough to secure the Gold Fury. Three-man boulder from Dora of Wood. Gold Fury still being aggressive. Michigan Tech is going to pick that one up. Now they're gonna be able to get a clean confirm on that one. Going to be able to make a nice dent in the lead that Bowling Green has really been able to kind of bring up right now. Bringing it down, I mean, when you say bringing it down, you expect to see a lot lower of a number. 9,000 gold and 13.5 thousand XP. And really, I mean, Bowling Green, they still have a distinct advantage with that kind of play. That's what Michigan State need to be able to do in order to continue their comeback in this game right now. Not just win that one fight, not just win that one gold fury, but continue that aggression, continue that fight style. As right now, Portal Beam and half health, and Door of Wood is just sitting there waiting for this last hit. He's waiting for the final aggression to be able to get it, and it's going to come through. It's going to go the way of Bowling Green. They're going to confirm that one, but the crashing down Thor has something to say about it. And right now, Vulcan trying to get the first damage down, but with the way Bowling Green has separated Tyler Champ off the board, and while we see Vulcan pick up a kill, ultimately they have to fall back. They're too low. Yeah, they do get that portal demon, as you said, stolen away thanks to the great play by Door of Wood. Able to continue continue zoning as long as he can, but being mad, gonna get the 1v3 
four kill onto White Kite. Gonna dash away. Lil Sud is here thanks to the Portal Demon, and so is the rest of his team. King Med just auto attacking to try and save his life. Has that Aussie proc to keep him alive just for the time. Fields of Love drop down. A great backfire, and a meatball is gonna help secure that one. King Med still alive. I so I realize their cameras aren't up, but that was just full on Pog Champ face. That was like the perfect play coming out from little sudman there to be able to confirm that for his team and now they're going to turn their eyes to the fire giant i personally think i would have liked to see them go for a phoenix or two because they would have had the time to do it but getting that fire giant take it off the board michigan tech cannot successfully defend a phoenix and take that off the board for another five more minutes so right now they're going to have to focus on this phoenix defense and right now encode choked up a little bit the freeze being held patiently the wall gonna be good the freeze gonna be good and now encode getting pushed to the wall stunned out the aegis comes through but one more hit the ultimate being used just to get the disengage but it's not going to quite work no the dance is good the movement speed from the passive encode just got out of there I don't know how he just got out of there. Vesnar taking up a little bit too much damage from the Phoenix, puts him about half HP. Does have that fire giant to keep him alive for a little bit. Tyler Tramp a little bit off the mark with that ultimate. I think he thought he was gonna have somebody pulled up in that one, but not gonna go his way. And now he's stuck between a rock and a hard place. The boulder comes out, but that guy's able to pick up Tyler Tramp. Vulcan ultimate over the top, immune out by two Aegis Ambulance. King Med's able to pick up that guy. The bird is going to fall, and now the team fight is gonna start going to the way of Bowling Green. Yeah, now we're seeing Vulcan get low, but he's saved one more time by King Med. Lacerate going to be able to help White Knight clean that one up. But Fields of Love going to pop and get a triple kill triple for kill. King Med. And now Encode is going to be the Quadra. one. It's a quadra that's going to be picked up to get the D aside and close out the game. King Med coming up big in that fight, utilizing the ultimate from Vesnar to continue the slow. Stacks a second big slow on them, picks up two with that fields of love now i'm going to walk into the fountain just to kind of troll a little bit around and the titan going to fall bowling street with bowling green state with a commanding 27 to 13 victory closing out that first game strong king med obviously feeling himself 15 0 and 8 on that cupid and again while they had 13 kills seven of them sitting on the back of their thor on the other side Whereas the love, I mean, obviously very centralized onto that Cupid, but otherwise well spread out, two, five, four, and one kills for everybody on the side of Bowling Green and Michigan Tech. They had a good showing. There were a lot of promises for them going forward, but really Bowling Green, they were just able to take every fight they wanted. They lost a couple along the way, but they ended up in the lead and finding that win. Yeah, it just comes down to the fact that Zarha was really the only one getting kills for his team. As you can see, one, 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 and a three for the Medusa, but Zarha sitting at seven. The majority, over half of his team's kills were on that Thor. And as you said, coming into late stage of the game, Thor just kind of falls off. His damage starts becoming a little bit less and less, no matter how much pure damage you build into at that point, you're just kind of an ult bot because you can't stay in close against these mages, against these hunters, especially if they've used those purification beats to get away from your only big thing, your ultimate, your big AoE stun. Now you're kind of just a sitting duck, especially if your hammer is down. Because of that, Bowling Green able to pick up game one. We will be back in just a moment with the picks and bans for game two of Bowling Green State and Michigan Tech. But before that, we do have a gem giveaway going on in the chat right now with kind of forgotten to be promoting this one but if you want a chance at 400 gems stay tuned into the chat buy yourself some tickets using those college credits and you may yourself be able to walk out of here with 400 gems we'll be back in just a moment with game two of bowling green versus michigan tech
And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, with Michigan Tech versus Bowling Green. Game number two, Bowling Green closing that one out strong. King Med with the quadra kill right there at the end to help his team close that one out. But before we go any further, even before introductions are due, I would like to remind you that there is a 400 gym giveaway going on in the chat right now, and you can purchase tickets for that by doing, I believe it's exclamation point ticket space whatever number of tickets you want to buy once you have that it will enter you for the giveaway we will be announcing the, the winner of that later but as it goes for this game my name is gormizer joining me right over there i believe if i'm pointing at the right direction on my camera is J Mac, <laughs> and uh we are here with i mean like i said michigan tech versus bowling green part two yeah, first bands out are Izanami and Thoth on the side of Michigan Tech and Thanatos Kepri on the side of Bowling Green. No longer want to deal with the hug bug res as that was the biggest contributor to them not finishing out a lot of team fights in that last game. Zarha going to elect to pick up the Sylvanas for his team as the first pick. And right now we're seeing a potential Medusa go over the, to the side of King Meta. It's going to be interesting. I mean, White Kite... Again, early on, actually had a lot of success with that Medusa, but was unable to find it towards the late game. Like, the later it transitioned, the less he had of an impact. And really, King Med, on that Cupid, I was going to say, you know, when we were first looking at it, like, oh, sometimes it's successful, sometimes Hercules. it's not. That was a very good case of it being widely successful. I think he was 15-0-8 at the end of that last game. But he's going to be switching back. He's hovering over and locks it right back in. We get to see another Cupid game. I mean, if it ain't banned and if it ain't broken... There's no need to fix it. King Med going to lock in the baby once again. And Door of Wood going to be able to lock in that Hercules one more time. So far, we're seeing the run back for Bowling Green. We'll see what picks are opted to go towards Michigan Tech. They do still need their carry, their hunter player. And they do still need a mid lane as well before those kind of get taken off the board. Right now, looking at Apollo, probably one of the stronger pickups right now is his early game push, his mid game push, and his late game are all very strong. Now we're seeing Apollo, like you said, locked in. Poseidon going Apollo. to be locked in. I'm happy to see that one again. We see a lot Poseidon. of Poseidon, and he's good. Transitioning really throughout all of the game, his Whirlpool gives him that little bit of extra early game aggression along with the cripple and kind of the pulling right into the center, allowing it to set up for the rest of the team. Then we get to see Kraken come online. And of course, when we get to late game, I mean, Kraken just continues scaling really well and continues to be that burst machine that you would want out of the Poseidon. So I expect to see that go a little bit more in favor of encode. I'm assuming that one's going to go to in the mid lane. Whereas on the other side, we're looking at a Susano hovered over. And honestly, this would be pretty exciting to see. And it gets locked in. Susano. Yeah, that's going to be able to pull anybody back in towards the center of that Fields of Love if they're too far out. Or if they use those purification beads very early on. As Susano is a very strong god at being able to pop those beads away. We may be seeing King Med able to get some strong aggression onto it. Or vice versa, if King Med pops them, that's not going to be really safe for anybody. Because then Susano is going to have full control of that. Especially on a god like Poseidon and Sylvanas who have no innate mobility. They don't have a leap. They don't have a dash to get out of that Typhoon. They're going to be stuck there if their purification beads are down. I think right now this team is looking to kind of just burn beads and then let the other, the rest of them kind of steamroll through. And we're going to continue seeing some more bands come out. Ymir on the one side, not wanting to deal with the walls and the freezes that were coming out. They were all very, very well placed for the most part. Odin was another band that came out and, I feel like that one might, again, be kind of to counteract some healing, although it could have been potentially picked up by either team at this point. Keep it heals are something that get kind of overlooked because they're not as great as we see out of, like, the Sylvanas, but still not wanting to deal with that. Thor are going to be removed from the board. Yeah, they. Uh, it's something that you see a lot in even the upper, mid, and lower levels of gameplay where if a team won, they're going to ban away what they would consider either the strong, the strong shot or the weak link of the team. They're going to ban the god that they just played to kind of get them out of that comfort zone. They're not looking to play Thor, so instead of Zarha getting, getting seven kills this game on that one, they're going to say, hey, Zarha, we liked your Thor. It was pretty good, but let's see what else you got here. And that's going to put him in a position again. This is going to be one of those areas where we could potentially end up just seeing Bowling Green run away with it it depends on what we see pull out i mean already i'm liking the roster maybe a little bit more than we saw last game out of michigan tech but not necessarily because the composition of last game was bad as much as it was the execution didn't quite fill out what they had wanted whereas right Scylla. now they're looking a lot better Scylla gonna be locked in and Scylla is one of the ones i have not been able to pinpoint every time i say oh well she'd be bad because early game 
the team makes it a late game and she just becomes an absolute devastator. She becomes a monster. I mean, plain and simple. Still, it gets into the late game, and if she's got even a remote amount of even farm, or if she gets even slightly ahead, she just steamrolls your team. She turns fights very quickly if she can get any reset on that ultimate. And that's one of the biggest benefits of Scylla is you get a kill without a monster, you get to use it again. That's a lot of big damage coming back your way, especially if it hits the same person twice. Like, oh, yes, I just barely lived, but my buddy died. Oh, now I'm kind of in a bad spot right now. Hoon Bot's gonna be the god locked in on the side of Michigan Tech. Not going for uh, not going for that throw this time because it was banned away. Instead, gonna be getting the party monkey. And honestly, this could work out well with him, especially with Nike. Nike. I like this roster and lineup really. The disruption coming out from the Hoon Bats, as long as they are aggressive with it, that is actually like the biggest caveat I have to give. I have seen so many Hoon Bats fail their play just because they want to hold Fear No Evil for too long. They just they never really want to pull that trigger and set up their team. They don't want to mess anything up. But really, you have to be a disruption machine. So assuming there's a lot of aggression from Michigan Tech here, I expect to see that Hunbats played very well. Whereas on the other side, we're looking down. I mean, Susano, of course, is kind of the same way. He needs to be aggressive, but it's not quite at the same level I've seen lately. And Vesna are looking for that last pickup. Honestly, I think they're looking for a Guardian. And mm -hmm. I mean, there's a ton of choices open for them. I mean, he could go for the Sobek if he really wanted to, to get some more anti-heal. He can go for the Geb to get a little bit of extra shielding going on for his team. And so, I mean, someone we haven't seen in a long time, Athena is still available as well. Yeah, even up to the point where Terra is still available if they want to go to have a big, strong healer on their team. Terra is still available, and Terra is also a very strong counter matchup to that Sylvanas. But it is going to be the Rock Guardian Geb to be able to provide those shields for Cupid or Scylla in cases of bad situations. It allows this team to be a little bit more aggressive because he's going to have those shields in order to peel them off. Has that AoE Cataclysm to set up for the Scylla Ultimates, the setup for the Cupid Ultimates, burn as many Purification Beads as they can, and burn as many Relics as possible. So we've got the very strong late game team coming out here on Bowling Green. Well, we've got a little bit of more of that mid to late on the side of Michigan Tech. So just, I mean, just looking at it real quick before we go in, I believe we might be seeing either some roll swaps or something weird going on uh, with these picks and bans, or maybe a trade didn't come through. I'm not entirely sure through my end right now because I see King Med on that Susano and Tyler going to be the one on that Cupid. Very interesting. It may indeed just be a roll swap going through onto this one as I don't expect that we're going to see Susano played in the carry position. But, you know, it wouldn't be the first time that we've seen an assassin. I know that we just saw earlier today or attempted to see earlier today. Fatal on that Fenrir game two, which we didn't have a chance to stream. He did play that Naja, which is... Well, like I said previously, that's the assassin that I see on Fatal. Fatal doesn't play hunters. Like the only time I've ever seen hunt Fatal Fatal play a legitimate hunter was AMC back in season two of the AVGL, and this time he played it because he was going against Skeladon and the Paradox, two very strong players and two players who they gave their respects towards. Where he actually had to kind of play a hunter, play a little bit more serious in a sense, but. We will see how this game goes. Make sure to quickly, before it ends, get your tickets on there to get that 400 gem giveaway. It's going to be ending at the end of this Picks and Bands, and we will announce the winner for it at the end of our game. We will be right back with Game 2 of Michigan Tech versus Bowling Green State, and you don't want to miss this action.
And we are back this time for game two. Michigan Tech looking to be able to find this reverse sweep. Bowling Green in a very comfortable position, sitting up that 1-0. And we are actually going to be seeing the roll swap coming out. King Med going into that jungle and Tyler Tramp playing Cupid this game. Yeah, as you said, we saw the, we were seeing the potential roll swap. We were kind of questioning it. We were like, oh, maybe there's just a trade that didn't go through. But indeed, we're going to see King Med on the Susano this time around in the jungle position. If you weren't here just a moment ago, my name is Jay Mac Tucker. With me is Gore Miser. We're bringing you the second game. Michigan Tech down 0-1 against Bowling Green. We're going to see if they can bring it back over in the dual lane. A little bit of a jump party. Some emotes going around on there. And that's the kind of play that you love to see is just this, you know, we're not here to like be the best. We're here to have some fun. And that's exactly what we're seeing over that duo lane. The rest of the lanes being a little bit, I guess not necessarily like uh, more to the point, but getting a little bit of poke down, clearing the waves out as much as they can. We're going to be seeing the jungle and mid for Bowling Green here actually fall back, get their own boss a little bit different than we saw last game where they kind of held that for a little bit to have those timers go on a little bit longer. And Vestar, Taking a full set of audacity to the face from White Kite, who's now going to get aggressed on King Med, going to be able to get some poke, but at level two, just not really enough to like warrant a life or death situation. Nah, he's going to like to just get out of there, go back to the mid lane, try and get a little bit of farm along with Lil Sud. As we mentioned, Scylla really not the early game god. She had str really struggles in her clear on the early stages, especially with the Soulstone being kind of reverted away from what it used to be, which was this really strong item. We're seeing her still pick it up at the time being. It gives her a little bit of extra little bit of extra power in the early stage, but it's mostly the mana that she gets back from whenever she uses the uh, proc of it. And we're going to see, again, a little bit of aggression and a little bit of poke come out from the dual lane from Bowling Green. The Heart Bomb going to connect to White Kite. But all in all, I mean, both of the teams, it seems like Michigan Tech is playing a little bit care more carefully than they did last game, not getting too, as aggressive as they did early on. And really, I mean, it's kind of working out for them right now. Very small numbers, but so far in their favor, they've got the gold and the XP, just kind of leaning about 500 and 300 each. But really, small numbers can grow into big numbers, and really that's what they're looking for. They were able to kind of steal away some of those small minions from the purple camp, able to confirm their own purple camp, and it looks like they're going to get these left-hand mid harpies as well. So all in all, I mean, they're doing some great farming. Yeah, they're kind of taking a page out of Bowling Green where they're just kind of passively farming, seeing what they can do here. And they have built themselves up a very small 400 gold lead at the moment. While that's not too much in the early stages of the game, it's just showing that they're being a little bit more patient this time around. They're sticking around. They're not doing the double Bumba start this time. They're actually sticking together and utilizing the single Bumba's mass passive on Zarha this time around. But... Gold uh, Oracle Harpies have been started up here. Likely going to be going the way of mission. That one actually gets leashed. A little bit of a misplay there, but they're able to still pick it back up. That, it was one of those things that you could see it, and I could honestly feel someone just kind of sighing into their mic at that point. Just when that happened is right now. It looks like Nike is going to be the one getting aggressive now. I thought Dora of Wood was looking for something, but not having that boulder online just yet is going to kind of write him off overall. And really, again, both teams are playing a lot more carefully, although that guy going to get driving strike right into the wall with stun coming out and a lot of autos being thrown through. A little bit more damage tanking from the minions right now. That guy getting low. The shield of Zeus going to be coming down. Sentinel being used. King Med has made the rotation over though, and they're looking for the last auto, and both ults gonna be used. They weren't gonna let that one get away, but that guy ends up falling. First blood goes the way of Dwarf Wood. There is no escape for you this time around. Nike did not have that jump available to help her out there. However, on the left side, fear no evil, and the Wrath of Terra is gonna put Vesnar in a bad situation, but he's gonna be able to roll out for the time being, but White Kite gonna be able to pick it up with one last auto attack, so they trade out first blood in the soul lane to get a kill onto their carry this time around. And immediately, I like Zarha's kind of intuition. As immediately runs into the jungle, goes straight for the damage camp. Watching the timer, I believe, just for the end game clock, very well. Going to be able to confirm, not confirm that one. He actually loses it away. I'm a monster going to come down. Not going to connect. The jump was good. Zarha now just trying to get away as Red Buff was secured. And little sudden, going to be able to pick that one up, put it on his belt, and deal a little bit more damage. And ultimately, I mean, they were able to get the small minions, so still kind of worth, and they wasted out the I'm a monster. So they have that aggression. The bead's going to be used, and Tyler Tramp going to not get pulled away this game. Not only the I'm a monster, the Fields of Love as well was used in that fight. So they know that they have both the mid and the carries big ultimates down for the time being, and that's going to allow them to be very high up into this duo lane, being able to really pressure Tyler under, under that tower. 
Vestar's making the rotation over, but he's kind of just trying to stay out of sight, out of mind. Shave Nips, I don't know if you quite saw him there. Kind of just the Guardians passing by each other. Solo lane slap boxing for the time being. It's a little bit of a different sustain. Now, Nike does have sustain in her kit, but it's passive HP5 where Hercules has that built-in burst heal. That's what's really going to spell the difference in this matchup is sustained poke is going to be able to take down the Nike where you're really going to have to burst down. Sunder use, but the driving strike missed. Dora of Wood, unfortunately, not going to get that kill. The Sunder coming out early on as well. Getting that little bit of extra damage overall, I expect to see that play a big role, especially towards the late game when they're going to be focusing down targets like the Hunbats, the Poseidon, and the Apollo. Of course, both of them or almost all of them, except maybe the Poseidon need to be locked down heavily so they can't get away. But right now, again, everyone kind of going back to the Farm Fest and really Michigan Tech showing up a lot better this game than the last game is right now. That guy once more time getting plucked back. Whirlpool going to come out. King Med teleporting away. But Zaha wants to fight. Fear No Evil going to be coming down. Door of Wood taking some damage, but they just don't have the lockdown. That guy knocked up into the air. The boulder comes through and finds the kill. Door of Wood able to get that one. The Blink Cataclysm going to be good. I'm a monster. Connects. Vestar gets credit for the second kill of the engagement and Shave Nip's going to get rooted down, but we're going to see the disengage. Bowling Green fall back, picking up two for none. And all the while, White Knight is taking away these Oracle Harpies. So while they lost two, I don't know if these Oracles are going to quite be worth the trade there. Beautiful execution of abilities on the side of Bowling Green. Gets the knockup to confirm the boulder. Gets the Cataclysm to confirm the I'm a monster. And the knockup to secure the kill onto that one. Beautiful teamwork on the side of Bowling Green in that last fight. Now they were able to find exactly what they wanted, just like you had said. And really, right now, I'm looking at King Med going in for this aggression again. Now he's going to be looking to steal away the purple buff. And so far, no one has sniffed him out. There are two members sitting right there at that red buff. A small rotation could find him, but he is in and out, able to clear up that buff, get extra experience, and now potentially make a gank. Why not? going to take some poke for it. Yeah, going to be forced to use that ultimate, surprisingly, King Med. Only made the rotation over, used a couple of abilities to see what he could do. Instead, it's going to force out that across the skies. Dorfwood going to put a little bit of poke onto that guy, but that's now his wave clear. is not going to have that available. Dorfwood just going to be able to heal up all the poke that was dealt to him. Going to be able to zone out this wave as well. But over on the left-hand side, Zarha catches out the overzealous King Med as three members rotated to take him down. And sometimes going a little bit too deep right there. King Met trades his life out. He was able to steal, I mean, some camps earlier. That aggression has paid off for him before. That time, just not so much. Oracle Harpies right now giving vision for Michigan Tech, who are going to start out and try to bait out this Gold Fury. And actually, no one from Bowling Green away. spotted it out. They're going to... This is going to be a free Gold Fury. Yeah, they just walked away from it. They were standing there. Geb was just clearing out a ward. I thought he was going to clear it and turn back to go to it. But instead, Michigan Tech just going to get a free Gold Fury. Expends the Kraken to secure it. Really not needed in that instance, but, you know, sometimes better safe than sorry. Tyler's going to rotate over and realize, oh, hey, guys, y'all walked right past him and Gold Fury is now gone. So, I mean, props to Michigan for that. I, yeah, and they had the Kraken online. They were able to get that extra little bit of burst to kind of confirm it as i mean that brings them back into it they were starting to lose that gold lead starting to lose that experience lead that they had worked so hard to gain up especially because they had lost that early on last game they didn't want to deal with that this game right now the gold lead going to be in their favor now it's only about 500 after that gold fury but ultimately again small numbers lead to big numbers they have to start somewhere they're looking right there whereas 500 experience but that one's in favor of bowling green who so far They've been winning the fights. They've been winning the engagements. And it's save for King Med's little overzealous push right there and getting killed. Overall, they've been playing this very, very well. Yeah, the experience lead is really just coming out from that duo lane. The rotation from Vesnar has given Tyler Tramp some strong free farm, which is what you really want on that hunter is to be able to let him do his thing, You know, just kind of let him be get his farm so he can get online and start destroying the enemy team in the later stages of the game. And because Vesnar has been rotating, he's been a part of these team fights to really help set up kills for his team, get him that extra goal from assists. He does have that kill to his name as well, but really that's where the big difference in the XP is, is really just in that dual lane right now. And across the board, I'm looking again, going to highlight Zarha and where I expect to see him play. I mean, already he's actually been meeting my expectations for the Humbats. He has been tossing out the Fear No Evil whenever he gets that chance to get that aggression going to allow his team to have that set up. And Encode as well has been kind of being able to pull that trigger on the crack and not 
feeling like they need to save it for the right moment, being able to just throw that out. If it gets the damage down, it gets the damage down. And right now that's been working out for them so far. Again, I mean, right now with Bowling Green kind of having that experience lead and with it being so small, it's nothing too really big for them to worry about. And I like the play style that Michigan Tech has really adopted in the second game to kind of push themselves forward, mainly because that aggression, I mean, that's what we saw out of Bowling Green. That was what kind of made that difference. So being able to see them return that, even if it means losing an engagement every now and then, as long as you can kind of come out on top for a few of them, eventually you'll find yourself in a favorable position. And right now, I mean, looking across the board, they're losing a lot of the camps, but being able to pick up that gold fairy was a very, very big turnaround for them. Yeah, we'll see if Michigan Tech continue that very sneaky play that they've had going on. But we're going to go to a very short break at the moment as this is a bit of an extended pause. We'll be back when the game starts back up, so do not go away. And we are back again this time going through that pause, being able to make it through. And honestly, i just going to comment on this. Smite looks so good when it is frozen. Yeah, it's a very beautiful map that Hyrus has put together here for us. Uh, sometimes a little bit better if you take off the excess amount of foliage that they put into this game, <laughs> which, um, you know, I'm glad that I do that because uh, it looks better for the spectator. Also, it looks better on my computer because I don't, uh, don't have 12 FPS whenever I play with it. Yeah, it's definitely better to get that higher FPS as we can see here as honestly when it comes down to it, FPS right now actually very important for someone like Shaved Nips being able to try and hit those poles coming through. I expect to see the Sylvanas be making a little bit more of an impact while we transition through this kind of mid phase of the game right now. Haven't really been saying his name too, too much lately, but I expect to see him be setting up a lot for his team as we go on. Yeah, that's going to kind of be his job as that support, get those big setups, get those potential big kills for his team. Shave Nip's going to take a bit of poke from King Med as well as White Kite 
That's um, you know, that's an early mid Susno. He has that blue stone, has that second tier, the Hydra Star online. He's gonna get that bonus damage. Fear no evil out as the Gold Fury Oracle. Harpies have been started up. Tyler Tram gonna be able to get away from that one just for the time being. King Med aggressing into the back line of White Knight, gonna get that teleport. The Typhoon is up, but the ultimate's not gonna save White Kite. A beautiful Typhoon will finish him off. Now I'm a monster over the wall, gonna be able to get some damage down onto Zarha, who's gonna try to clear out some mid harpies to get the healing. I actually like the call there. Gonna use that teleport to be able to get through and disengage. And right now, King Med not able to really fight into the whirlpool. Encode, though, low on mana, gonna be falling back. Now with three members strong, Zarha still low health, low mana, but he's gonna be sticking around. Shave Nips not gonna be able to get the root. Goes for the pull, not quite going to be able to hit it. And ultimately, I feel like we're gonna see Michigan Tech. They're gonna heal up, but fall back. They gotta be careful though. Dwarf Wood has made the rotation in. He's looking for something here. Don't know if he's going to try and go for a Sunder play, but instead elects to go for the knockout, going to miss, and that's going to spell the end of that fight for Bowling Green for the moment. Still sticking around a little bit aggressive is Dora Wood, and he's the only member of his team. Michigan Tech, I think, is realizing this, trying to move forward. Zarha is going to try and maybe put a little bit of poke. Just steps away from that knockup, and now they're finally going to walk away from the Hercules. Over in the dual lane, again, a little bit of boxing match just kind of going on between the two ADCs. Nothing too big really coming out of it so far as right now white kite really has been like the the target of aggression for some of the kills and i mean speaking of which king med making that rotation over going to be teleporting forward going to get the pull back going to get the damage but the mez is going to be good and white kite is going to be out of there cleanly yeah i mean that's kind of the power of apollo is when you get past that level nine stage you can now start putting extra points into your mesmerize that's exactly what he does three points into the serenade right now it's a full second and a half of well, you're not moving, and on a Susano, that's a very long time to not be able to utilize those abilities, especially when you use them already to get in. Now you're kind of just a sitting duck at that point. All right, now we're going to be seeing Shave Nips come into the back line. I feel like he uh, expected his team to be a little bit more aggressive, but they all fell back. And while he's trying to poke forward, he's going to realize that there's a Sentry Ward right there in the mid lane. Might be able to come back with a counter for that one, but really... Michigan Tech, again, kind of falling back into this, not necessarily like this routine route where they're just going to sit back, but they're just going to farm up, try to get themselves back into a position to fight forward. And with cracking up, with the pull up, I expect to see, again, Shave Nips set up his team right now. But really, gold experience starting to lean back in favor of Bowling Green. Yeah. One thing I'd like to point out here is the lack of the even potential gem of isolation on Encode. I'm a monster is going to hit over the top, but it's not going to be enough damage. The heal is keeping him alive. And a great fear no evil prevents the crush from going off. He's going to get knocked up by that Typhoon. I don't think King Med's going to be able to make it out of this one. Vesnar shields himself instead of King Med, and that's going to be the first death in that engagement. Cataclysm, but a great pull is going to yank Vesnar back. The Sunder's good, but it doesn't matter. Shave Nip's going to get the second kill. Door of Void going to be able to get the driving strike to pick up Shave Nips, but that's going to be the end of that team fight. Feels Geb, man. That was one of those moments where any kind of circumstance, and if you play the god, this is really where it comes down to it. It's very difficult when you're aiming the shield right next to you to be able to hit them versus you, and that's the same thing that kind of goes on there. Some other abilities in Smite that have the same issue, and honestly, like one of the ones I think of right off the top of my head is Yanis Portal. Whether or not it hits the wall or the floor, sometimes it's just up in the air, and it's just one of those mechanical things that right there it went poorly for Vestnar and ultimately ends up in his team losing that engagement. Tyler Tramp forced to use the Fields of Love just to get away. Yeah, the defensive ultimate from the Cupid, the Kraken to try and help take down this Gold Fury. Michigan Tech's going to get their second clean Gold Fury this game. Vesnar's in the area, going to knock up two, but there's not going to be any major follow-up after. King Med forces out the Aegis from Encode. Going to try and put a little bit of poke into the enemy team, but he himself is going to take a lot. Going to get yanked back. Is Vesnar very lucky of King Med to not be the one of that pull? And Vesnar being the fortunate target, really, there. If anyone's going to get pulled, you want it to be that tank. And Nike making that rotation over. Nike making a rotation over from the left-hand side of the map, I should say, as well. Making that over. And another clean Gold Fury picked up for Michigan Tech. Again, being able to wrestle that Gold lead right back into their favor. Bring that experience lead down to almost nothing. Now sitting about 1,300 gold in favor of Michigan Tech. But right now, I mean, we've been watching. Bowling Green has been able to kind of dig divots into that before and i expect to see them do it again door of wood right now actually patiently waiting behind a wall to get aggressive driving strike gonna be good but it's a solo lane it's a nike it's just gonna be some standard issue poke the knockup not quite gonna connect and ultimately it's just gonna come out as a wash i can just hear bryce somewhere crying tears of joy as the mystical male has been picked up on the man <laughs> of a million mana points yet again 
This is an item that we didn't see a lot of back in the last season. Kind of a uh, kind of a standard pick back in season two. Fallen off a little bit since. Big rotation onto White Kite. Gonna get knocked up. Forces out that Aegis and the Purification. He's gonna keep the knock up away. Serenade's not gonna last long because of the tower shot. The teleport, the dot is gonna be enough. Cataclysm not really needed there, but just to make sure they secure that kill. Now we're going to be seeing Vesnar get ganked in on Poseidon's right here. King Med one more time going to get caught out. Whirlpool coming down, but it's not going to stop him from dashing away. Overhand Smash gets a little bit of extra damage now, but with Little Sud and Vesnar here, doesn't look like they're going to have too much to get on Michigan Tech. Not able to find the pull. Shave Nips just off the mark, and we will see Bowling Green be able to live through this engagement. We really need to see Encode start utilizing these Whirlpools a little bit better. Start getting them on because King Med is just the extremely mobile god. Just like Sir Ket, it's a very difficult god to lock down. Susano has, you know, you know, he has two dashes. He's got the third tick of his first ability able to get there. And then he's also able to throw out the teleport if he chooses to go to it. Lowers the cooldown on it by just a little bit as well. So you really need to utilize these cripples to start locking down the Susano. Otherwise, he's just going to keep walking away like he did there. Big note to point out, during that entire engagement over here, the 4-0 and o Hercules able to find the first tower of the game and looking to try and steal away a blue buff. Not quite able to find that. And Code going to be making the rotation over with the Whirlpool, trying to get that damage, but a lot of it being returned right back onto him. He's low, and he's barely running away right now. The speed going to be able to save him right now. Unvats just barely being able to jump out. Fear No Evil used just to stop the aggression onto him, but Zarha, he takes a little bit of time to turn around and look at it, and I feel like that's going to be his downhaul. King Med Coming over with the knockup, going to be able, looking for the kill, not able to find it, but he is able to pick it up with his dash, being able to find that extra little bit of damage. Now Shave Nips going to be the one bursted down by the crush door, going to find his fifth kill, and that is going to be a two for none, Trey. King Med, the only one close to falling for Bowling Green, but he makes it out. And it's the unfortunate part of right now, this Hercules is doing much more in these team fights than the Nike is. Nike, most, most notable for her passive, giving that extra movement speed and power, but at the time being, not really offering anything for their team right now. The knockup, not doing too much, and that big slow is not really being utilized right now. In code, sitting under his mid lane tower, three members trying to push this up, but minions are just now getting into the tower door. Wood kind of forced to back off just a little bit, but he needs to be careful. Kraken used defensively just to clear out the minion wave, and maybe try and put a little bit more aggression into this tower. Tier 1 tower is eventually going to fall, and I think in code may also pay with his life. Zarha's here, but is going to avoid the knockup, and now they're going to disengage. Or not. Oh, we're actually going to see the teleport come through. Overhand smash Zarha looking for a little bit of extra aggression. Really, the thing I want to point out during all of that is right now King Med taking a little bit of poke from White Kite. Nike, right-hand side, split pushing, got the tier one, was able to kind of do exactly what we saw Hercules do. King Med being the target of aggression. White Kite going to take a hard bomb to the face, going to be able to get bursted a little bit, but nothing too bad coming out. Fear No Evil going to be thrown down, but again, beads used to just disengage from that one. And Door of Wood making that rotation over. Fear No Evil and I'm a monster going to be off the mark, but King Med going to be able to pick up Zarha. Yeah, he's going to be able to get out of the fight for now. The Blinkman used to get back in. He got messed down. What? The knockout's going to be the only thing left of him. White Kite, very strong play there to make sure that it locks down that Susano can't for continue any aggression. Four members strong for Michigan Tech. So, uh... Yeah? Here's the real question. Okay. Uh... Why go back in there? I can, I guess, I could understand maybe some, uh, some little bit of extra damage, maybe some CC, a shield from the Geb, perhaps anything really to kind of help out the jungler there. But ultimately, King Med just kind of again, that's the second time this game where I felt like the death was a little bit, um, a little bit off putting, really unnecessary. The blink right back into it, but the gold fury being started up. Michigan Tech looking for this one, and right now the Kraken online gonna get the burst now, but they threw it out really early. Fields of Love gonna come down. Bowling Green are able to steal that one away, pick up a kill, maybe even two. Is Encode gonna get chased down with no mana? White Kite gonna be rooted out. Bowling Green, I mean, that was just the Kraken came out way too early there for Michigan Tech. Yeah, I think they really overestimated how much damage they had. Vesnar is going to fall, but King Med is going to pick up one of them. White Kite is going to fall and shave Nips are up very early on. Vesnar does fall there. Zarha and that guy forced to retreat for the time being. And now King Med's going to rotate around, try and strip out any jungle that is remaining. Red buff was down, but the purple buff is up. Just give himself a little bit more farm. That was... Just the kind of, I mean, when it comes down to it, that was the kind of play you just never want to see. And it's unfortunate, again, it was just in code, throwing out that Kraken a little bit too early. Again, like you said, I think overestimating the amount of damage that they would really be able to pull out. 
And right now it's costing them a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean about 2,500 gold sitting in favor of Bowling Green just because they were able to pick up that Gold Fury right there. 6,300 experience in their favor, though. And right now, I mean, King Med going in to get that farm over through the jungle. I'm putting a lot of weight on him. I, I, I'm giving him a little bit of hell just because of the, the two deaths we've seen that have been just kind of going in a little bit too deep or re-engaging a fight that didn't need to be re-engaged. But right now, him and this Hercules, five kills on both of them, really leading the way for their team. I want to kind of put it back to Encode, where normally this season, we know we've seen the resurgence of Poseidon, and we've typically seen one big staple item out of these Poseidons, Gem of Isolation. We haven't seen that pick up yet, and we're not going to see it for a little bit while, as the magic focus has been picked up. Not looking to get that, no longer really a luxury item, it's more of a staple item on the Poseidon. Instead, I'd like to go for do more. Bing Cataclysm only going to land onto one. The Fear No Evil in the back's going to land onto four of them. Typhoon holding two in place. I'm a monster not going to connect onto anybody, but Zarha is going to fall to Little Sun. Cracking a little off the mark. Forces Little Sun to retreat. And White Knight's going to pick up Tyler Tramp and a solo kill? They're going to be able to get the solo kill over there. As right now, that guy one more time trying to get aggression down. Gets the silence. Vesnar taking a lot from the Whirlpool. Not able to find the kill just yet. They're chasing him down. And Code going to be the one to fall. Those King Med gets that. And we do see eventually. No, Vesnar made it out. Vesnar's alive. The meditations are going to be used. The shell's going to be used to keep him alive. The shield's good as well. And Shave Nips now the one in the damage. Taking a lot of poke. Going to get knocked back right by Door of Wood. Going to get aggressed on. And that is going to be another clean kill for the Hercules. Nike forced to run away now use that jump aggressively and that may end up being their downfall great blink from King Med to avoid the second shot of that ability and now being aggressed onto but that guy does have a little bit too much HP for them to continue that aggression while now they're gonna try and chase down a white kite over in the duo lane and uh he, there he goes now he's gonna fall best not gonna pick that up with the knockout Vesnar went from one hit away to almost full health, and he has not gone back to the base. And really, that is going to be, I want to say, help of that 10 HP 5 is getting off that mail of renewal, as well as just kind of being able to come through and be very well placed with his team. As we're seeing Door of Wood again get very aggressive. Zarha going to be the main target of his aggression right now. The rest of Michigan Tech going to be able to rotate over three members standing right around here. Fourth going to be joining soon. The red buff just gets stolen away like it's nothing. They just don't do anything about it. You see who picked it up too? Door of Wood is the one holding onto that red buff. This big man, Hercules, now going to hurt just a little bit more. Not going to do too much extra damage as he's only really built into the Warrior tab eye. But that just means that boulders are going to hurt a little bit more. Driving Strike is going to do a little bit more damage. And right now this tier 1 tower looking to be the target of aggression for Bowling Green. Lil Sud has rotated out to instead elect to go for these mid camps. Knows he's not needed over there. And now going to try and get a little bit more farm in the mid lane. And we're going to be seeing, I mean, I like this split coming out from Bowling Green being able to push down the mid lane because right now we're seeing Scylla get aggressive. She's going to be able to push at least one wave into this tier two as right now we're going to see White Kite come crashing down, getting the nice damage down already. I'm a monster forced out just for the movement speed. I like that play coming out of from Little Sutherland, but he might not make it out of their fields of love going to be able to help him out though, getting that nice slow down. And now that guy going to be the one who's taking a lot of damage. Heart Bomb going to be applying right there and King Med going to chase him down, looking for the blood should be able to find it. The dot damage is going to be good enough to get it. The knockout going to be coming out from Shave Nips, though. But I don't know if King Med's going to be able to make it out of this one. Gets Mez now. One more auto attack will be enough to do it. And White Kite is going to secure that one onto their King Med. A little bit over aggressive there and use all of his mobility just to get into the fight. Going to be pulled back is Tyler Tramp waiting for the fear. No evil. Great play by Zara, but it's going to get shielded out by Vezar. Two man driving strike into the tower. Dwarf Wood picks up Zarha and Shave Nips thanks to the tower shot. And now they're forced to retreat. Sunder on the end coat. Going to get pulled back. Mez out, but it's not going to be enough to save his life. Lil Sud's going to pick up Poseidon. And now White Kite, the only member left standing for his team, going to try to get a little bit of damage thrown out, try to poke out Vesnar, but ultimately he is just going to be looking for a full-on retreat. We could see Bowling Green. I mean, there's tons on the board, and it looks like they're going to turn their eyes towards that Portal Demon, be able to pick that one up just to get that experience, get that gold, take it away from Michigan Tech. And honestly, with the timers that they have left, they might even be able to turn towards the Fire Giant, but the Portal Demon takes maybe a little bit too long for them to really consider that as an option. Why Kai may have an opportunity to steal this here. He actually is so beautiful, followed by the auto. Michigan Tech, White Kite, going to be able to take away that Portal Demon and allow his team to get into the middle of the fight. Tyler Tramp going to get knocked up, but it doesn't matter. 
the heart bomb gonna be finishing him off there and now the fight has turned in favor of bowling green because of it i'm a monster is gonna hit two not gonna get any kills that guy forced to use his ultimate cupid going to fall to encode however and now the fight is still turning in favor as king meds made the rotation in now white kite no mana stuck between three the knockout gonna be coming out from susano age is gonna be used beads gonna be used all gonna be channeled but not in time double kill for king med is now they're gonna turn around blink forward going right on to shave nips but immediately turns around is juking right around that guy like it's nothing using that teleport to get away the shield gonna be good and now we're still seeing the aggression he's gonna go for that extra little bit of damage but use it to farm push up this minion wave and help push up this tier two that was a beautiful, uh, it's a very small play that that guy pulled there, but it was enough to be able to disengage the team. As soon as King Med used that dash, he was already in the process of jumping to where he knew he was going to go. Landed on top of him and made that, and forced Geb to use the shield there. And it just completely disengaged all aggression that was coming from Bowling Green there. Forced to back up and just go now safely clear their buffs. One thing that... You know, I'm going to continue harping on this is the lack of gem of isolation. If it was up in those fights, Encode would have been doing, able to do a lot more, hold back the enemy team just a little bit longer for his team to make the rotation in. But, you know, I mean, that's kind of what you get Poseidon for is that big gem of isolation, that big AoE slow. While the cripple is nice, it's really what's going to help you out. And nothing's going to help shave Nips out at the moment. He is caught out in the middle. Great ultimate is going to keep him alive for the moment. But Door of Wood going to pick him up and Lil Sud going to follow after. And right now, Zara gonna be the one who's trying to get away, but it's not gonna be fast enough. That guy taking a lot of damage. Whirlpool gonna be good. Kraken off the mark, but right now, Tyler's one hit away. Going to be able to find it. Encode, though, gonna get killed down by Door of Wood. And King Med coming back in, gonna be able to find the double kill. Gets four kills for his team. The Mez is gonna be good from the Apollo White Kite. Now trying to one away, but Door of Wood wants the blood. He's gonna be chasing him down. Pops the heal early to go in. Gets the knockup. Gonna find the driving strike right back into his team. A lot of damage coming down. Burst going to be going through. And nice jukes coming out. The Shield gonna be good in the last couple autos. That is gonna be a clean Dia side, a tier two, and possibly a Phoenix if they want to continue pushing. Shave Nips, the only one up right now. They have about seven seconds before they see Zara back up. Two, I mean, two very strong messes came out from White Kite in that, but because of diminishing returns, the second one did not last last nearly as long, and he unfortunately mezzed. Door of Wood in front of him got body blocked against the wall and was forced to use that dash to try and get between them instead of just walking away in that one. Very unfortunate for him. Did the best that he could, but unfortunately not able to get out. Six, six, and three right now on White Kite for the Apollo. But right now, Door of Wood. 10 0 oh, 10 this is the play you want to see out of a hercules and this is exactly i mean earlier on he was sitting you know he had five kills on his belt he's split pushing over there ever since he has rotated he has been setting up his team perfectly he's getting the knockups he's getting the driving strikes and even sometimes when you see you know and this happens a lot of the times with a hercules every now and then they might get pushed away from the damage he has been able to confirm it and the auto is chasing him down and like i, I honestly want to give a little bit of it this mystical mail as well helping him out really in chasing down the targets and of course, we can't help but mention the Sunder that he's had that has allowed them to help get a lot of picks down is right now. It looks like Michigan Tech looking to fight over here. Gold Fury Pit is going to be the target of aggression. But Bowling Green, honestly, with the way they're positioning themselves, it looks like they just want to bait it out. They want someone to fight into them. Yeah, their, their fight is much better in these small corridors as I'm a monster is going to be much easier to hit when nobody can really walk away. Speaking of which, I'm a monster has been forced. The Cataclysm is going to come down, but it's going to be off the mark. He was expecting it a little bit too far over the uh, uh, Tyler. White Kite is going to be able to pick up one. White Kite going to be able to pick up two. Now Code's going to take down the Scylla. What looked like it could have been Bowling Green's fight is turned on its side because of the miss. I'm a monster. Vesnar being chased out. That guy is jumped just a little bit off the mark. And now that's going to open up the Gold Fury for Michigan Tech. That was a very big play for Michigan Tech, being able to turn that around, be able to get that Gold Fury, bring themselves effectively back into a position to continue fighting this game. Now, Door of Wood going to get caught out. Whirlpool going to be good. The pull going to be good as well. But he's just so tanky as this Hercules focused down the tower is the idea right now. And that is exactly what Michigan Tech are going to do. They're still trying to get aggressive. But again, with the two tanks doing a lot, there's just not much they can do in terms of kill. But they will be able to confirm the objective and bring their gold lead just a little bit closer to what Bowling Green has amassed.
Yeah, only about a 3,000 gold lead now for Bowling Green, thanks to that Tier 1 tower and the Gold Fury falling there. Michigan Tech now looking to strip out the jungle and get as much experience and gold off the map as possible. Purple buff is down, so Zarha is not going to be able to get that one. Now they're going to look to aggress over into this left-hand side, maybe go for the Tier 2, but the entire team of Bowling Green is now alive, and they're going to be making this rotation over to the Tier 2 tower. Now we are going to see, I think, Apollo over here actually trying to solo around this portal demon, looking to get a little bit of extra damage. And honestly, he's able to do it. He's got the lifesteal. He's got the damage. And no one on Bowling Green has sniffed him out just yet. It's going to be a free portal demon. And again, this is what Michigan Tech really need to do. They need to utilize the fact that Apollo is able to do this kind of thing. And... Ultimately, now they get to sit back and be comfortable as they have a clean portal demon. The team is able to teleport over here. Now they're ready for a fire time fight. Vestar are going to be able to get the knock up. But right now, I mean, Michigan Tech are looking to fight in. Root's going to be a little bit off the mark to hold Door of Wood. Zara unfortunately walks in right next to Door of Wood there, and he's not going to be able to spot it out just yet. However, Blank Tentacles hits five right. members. Sikkim's going to hit three. I'm a monster hits one. I'm a monster hits two. The reset's not going to be enough as that guy still lived on. Knockup's going to be able to get White Kite one kill, but King Med's going to pick up in code in the back. Unfortunately, you can't go back through that portal. White Kite forced to be on the retreat. The Sunder's going to be off the mark, and Shave Nips likely going to fall here as he's going to get yanked back, chased down, and the Crush is going to be able to take him out. White Kite and that guy going to be able to live through the engagement, but it leaves the Fire Giant wide open if we see Bowling Green want to go for that. There's also a nice set of jungle buffs they can strip away if they really want to, or continue this aggression. The right-hand lane is pushed up, and they're going to opt in for this one to go and get that Tier 2, push down the tower a little bit more, and extend their goal lead, extend their lead after that fight, which was very cleanly in favor. It looked like it could have gone in favor of Michigan State, but that five-man cataclysm, so good from Vesnar able to set up his team and of course when we saw Sud being able to get that I'm a monster proc it twice and get that damage down it just looked all downhill for Michigan Tech from there yeah Bowling Green with a very strong team fight in that last one as you said the five man cataclysm from Vesnar is what really started the fight in favor for Bowling Green and little Sud with much better follow-up this time getting the first kill and getting the reset to pop out as much damage into that guy as possible, forcing out that Sentinel of Zeus defensively as opposed to offensively this time. Now Michigan Tech sitting down in gold, only about 3,400 at the time, so it hasn't really spiraled out for them yet. However, two members level 20 right now for Bowling Green, only one on the side of Michigan Tech, so that experience lead is still in favor of Bowling Green, and it's still somewhat considered true experience. And now we're seeing a little bit of a dance around this fire giant pit. We're just waiting for one team to really get aggressive. All ultimates are on the board and pretty much anyone could go in right now. Zarha probably going to be the one I would look at the most to try and get that aggression, but he just hasn't really been pushing forward with that fear no evil. So I expect to see Vesnar really be the one who kicks this one off with the blink cataclysm with both of those being up. I expect to see him patiently waiting for a group up from Michigan tech and just Patience has been Bowling Green's game. They have been go going in at the right times every single time. Yeah, like we saw, Vesnar waited until they all grouped up and landed into all five of them. But now we see a Magi's Blessing on the side of that guy to make sure that he can't get stunned out as easily, but he needs to be careful that he doesn't get that bubble popped on him too early into these fights. White Kite going to be able to farm up a little bit here in this mid lane, but it's just a game of waiting right now. Bowling Green doing a fantastic job just holding off, not being too crazy, not being aggressive, just going to go ahead and clear up some jungle buffs here and wait for the team fight. And now we're seeing again, I think the aggressive positioning from Michigan Tech and the fact that they are not as well grouped up right now, two of them standing alone could have been the opportunity for Bowling Green to really kind of pick them apart. They're trying to do some zoning as the Fire Giants started up. We're going to see King Med get mezzed out. And now the bait's coming out. Fields of Love going to be thrown down. Vesnar going to get the Blink Cataclysm on his Arha, but it's only going to hit one target. But the I'm a Monster going to be able to erase in code completely off the bark. Shave Nips now getting really low and looking to fall down. Boulder going to come out. Door of Wood looking to find White Kite. Trying to find this kill as the kills are all over. Shave Nips going to fall down. White Kite going to fall down. Zarha getting low. Elite might be able to save his life as that guy also tries trying to run away both of them just looking to get out of this fight as best they can but that guy now getting about half health door of wood looking to get the knock up finds it finds the driving strike stun and now with four members strong surrounding him that is going to be a small but big kill for king med there going now 15 6 and 8 10 0 and 16 again the two members really leading their team right now and this phoenix does not look like it's going to live long
No, and that's a great call from them. Even though the Fire Giant is up, the Phoenix is a little bit better for them to take here. No minions to alleviate that damage, but Dwarf Wood is going to be able to tank it up for the most part. Zaha may look to go a little bit aggressive here, but turns against it as the mid bird is going to fall. They're now turning the attention to the left side of the map. That tier 2 tower is still available. Going to go ahead and strip out away a little bit of the jungle for now, but ultimately going to be able to take that and a great team fight for Bowling Green, utilizing those small corridors. Vesnar, or not Vesnar, Zarha waited maybe a little too long to use that Fear No Evil. Yeah, and that's, again, one of those things I was mentioning, really, when we were talking in Bigs and Bands, it seems so long ago at this point, but you have to be ready to pull that trigger whenever you have the opportunity to, not just waiting on it for it to be the prime opportunity, but you have to be able to say, is this going to either save me or help turn this fight around? You have to be ready to pull that one out, and that just didn't come out quite on time for Michigan Tech. Not necessarily the thing that was the deciding factor in the fight, but definitely something that might have been able to help turn it around and at least pick up a couple kills for Michigan Tech there. But right now, reading the board, 35 to 16 in favor of Bowling Green. They have gotten a 9,000 gold lead and pushed it up to about a 16,000 experience lead at this point. And they're just looking ready to go. In fact, I actually see a frenzied ritual picked up on the side of Vesnar, I expect that they are ready to fight and they are looking to honestly kind of push for the end if they can get another engagement like that last one. Yeah, Frenzy on both sides right now, but a great sick comes through the portal! Lil Sun's gonna pick up Sarha with a small combo, and now that leaves it already four members only for Michigan Tech. Vesnar's gonna roll forward. King Med's gonna go aggress into White Kite because he was too low in mana and Relics were down. This team fight. Not even really a team fight, just great awareness by Lil Sud was able to pick up one and assist taking down the second. The other thing that played a very large role for White Kite's death right there. Minions kept him in combat. Minions kept him from going down. It's the Fire Giant going to be aggressed on. It's going to be going down, and it's going to be taken. Bowling Green are able to confirm that one and pick up a kill on the encode as now they're going to continue their aggression. Two tanks stand. Two tanks looking to fall as Bowling Green are going to chase down Shave Nips right now. Knocked back by Vesnar, who's going to continue. But with four members strong right now with the Fire Giant, one Phoenix already down. They're looking to close out at least another one as they look one more time for this kill. But Shave Nips being a tanky tree, still trying to get on out of there. Gotta be careful because mid lane minions, fire minions that is, have to uh, quite a damage number on this Titan. Boulder's gonna go out, it's only gonna hit onto one door of wood. Unfortunately, walking back into the Phoenix, gonna fall. Zarha gonna get the credit for that kill. King Med, give him the shield. Typhoon is up, Typhoon is down, and so is the Titan. Bowling Green gonna be able to take the second game, 39 to 18 long aggression we didn't get to see a cupid quadra kill for that one but we did see a, a, a honestly pretty successful roll swap at least on the side of king med tyler not looking like he had the best time in that dual lane on the cupid but overall i mean his team was able to come out he did play a large role for them in fact looking at the damage wise he wasn't big on the kills numbers but he was 16k damage and again while that's behind the three members who are really doing a ton of work it was still a lot to be coming out of that cupid but when i look at it i mean looking at the scylla 30,000 player damage, King Med at 17, 6 and 9, 35k, and Door of Wood, 10, 1, 20. Probably the MVP for that game just with how much he was able to set up his team. Yeah, I mean, you can already see it. 30 out of the, what, 39 kills that we saw in that game, or 38. I've already forgotten which number it was. I think it was 39 in that one. Being a part of almost all of the three, or more than three quarters of the kills, Door of Wood was there. He was saying, hey, I'm here. I'm here to help you out. But what I want to attribute the win to that one was that Portal Demon. Yes, once again, the Portal Demon is great. It's global gold. It's global experience. You get the ability to get into that map. But if you don't have a ward there, if you don't have vision, it could be a death trap. And that's exactly what happened. Three members walked through, and Little Sud said, Hey, I'm a Scylla. Here's a Sikkim. Here's a Crush. Now, team fight is ours. And it's just one of those things, like, Again, and other things we can point out really that came down to it was the fact that Bowling Green, honestly, they were kind of wrestling back and forth both teams for the lead up until that one Gold Fury. The Kraken came out too soon. Bowling Green were able to take that one away. And when it came down to it, they had that lead and essentially held onto it. Michigan, they were able to kind of take dents at it. They were able to kind of chip it down, but they never truly regained from that one play. And it really all just kind of came downhill from there. That being said, I mean, they played it really well. White Kite was very, very close to being, I mean, 
honestly being able to get a lot of damage done. He did so much for his team, just not able to confirm everything. The same thing kind of goes for encode there. Both of them getting focused down whenever they were there. And Zarha, again, I just feel like he didn't throw out the ult enough. Nah, he was not able to help out his team enough. Waited too long, held those Fear No Evils a little bit too much there. Didn't use them so much aggressively as, oh my goodness, the team fight is starting. Please get away from my team at this time. Kind of panic moments for him. And that was really what kind of led to the demise of Michigan Tech. Bowling Green is going to get the victory. And we also have one member of our audience getting a nice little win for them tonight. Wood6, spelled W00DVI, Wood6 is going to be the winner of our 400 gem giveaway. Congratulations, sir. Go ahead and say something in the chat so that we know that you are still there. We will get you your lovely 400 gems. You can use those to buy some of the new, amazingly beautiful skins that are out into the game right now. And that's going to end up being it for tonight. I mean, barring some technical difficulties, I feel like we got to watch some really great games there. And I mean, Bowling Green looking really strong. I actually remember talking about this team a little bit. I mean, we've talked about them behind the scenes and in videos a few times, and they are one of those teams to keep their eye on just because, I mean, obviously they play very well. And even there, when you could tell that maybe some of their players weren't exactly comfortable with what they were doing, and my, my eyes are really going to be looked right at Tyler Tramp, just not quite feeling himself there in that Cupid role. But, I mean, the rest of it, they're a team to be reckoned with. And overall, it's looking good as I look over in the chat, and Bryce accidentally bans the winner of the giveaway. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. Instead of winning gems, you're instead going to win win yourself a nice ban hammer courtesy of Bryce LPs. Put your hashtag blame Bryce in the chat this time around as we get to blame him for banning somebody who did something good. But that's going to do it for us tonight here at the ABGL. A great shout outs to my fellow caster Gore Miser joining me tonight, as well as our stream manager Bryce, the one who just happened to ban our winner. So no more shout outs for Bryce. Please get out of here. Ban Bryce would be a better command that we need to have into that one. Shout outs to our man, Choo Choo Train, the commissioner of the AVGL for all of the work that he does behind the scenes. You guys hear a lot from him in our chats and I'm, you know, I'm, it's crazy how much he does for us. Our secondary production man, Extreme, for coming in to help us out on the support as Jithan's our production man to start the night. Having a bit of technical issues, get that computer fixed up, man. And lastly, a big shout out to the man, the myth, the legend himself, the leader of the ABGL, Mr. Victor, for allowing us to do all of this here tonight. That's going to do it for us. Thanks for coming out and watching some great smite. We're going to have some amazing Dota 2 action for you guys tomorrow night, and you don't want to miss out from all of us here at the ABGL. We thank you and have a great night.